You fool! Warren is dead. Welcome to Horror Babble. We've got a super rare and super short weird tale in store for you today, folks. An oddity called The Ordeal of Wooden Face by the American author Hal K. Wells. The story first appeared in Weird Tales back in January 1932 and was described by the magazine as follows. His dead eyes came to life when he saw the young American stagger into the bungalow like a spectre out of the past. We hope you enjoy this one. The Ordeal of Wooden Face by Hal K. Wells MacDonald forgot the smothering heat of the jungle night as he watched the miracle that was taking place there in his bungalow, for the dead eyes of wooden-faced Jones were coming to life. The young American had come staggering into MacDonald's clearing nine months ago, a nameless derelict with a nameless past. He could not have been over thirty, yet his ravaged, set face was that of a very old man, and his eyes were the terrible lustreless eyes of a dead man walking in the night. He remained on at the bungalow as an assistant to the lonely Scotch naturalist. MacDonald gave him the name of Jones. The natives of the district added the descriptive sobriquet of Wooden Face. Through the months the sombre veil in the eyes of Wooden Face Jones had never once lifted. But tonight, as Anson Borger's thick voice rasped on, the veil in the derelict sighs was swiftly lifting, and the light which blazed in their depths was one that made even MacDonald's case-hardened nerves tingle. Borger, an official of a New York ivory firm, had been MacDonald's guest since morning. He was a flabby hulk of a man, with cold little pig eyes set in a heavy-jowled, whiskey-reddened face. Hours of steady drinking in an effort to deaden the soggy torture of the heat had finally loosened his tongue, until all reserve was now cast aside in a maudlin boasting of his past exploits. This young Garland had a fine job back in New York, a fine girl and all that, Borger was relating contemptuously. But why should I have had any squeamish scruples on that account? Why, we'd never even seen each other. I had the chance to use him for a stepping stone, and I took it. Garland got out of the United States just one jump ahead of the law. I got his job, and now I'm sitting pretty. I've never heard of Garland since. The young sap probably killed himself. No, he didn't kill himself, Borger, wooden faced Jones broke in softly. The light in the derelict's smouldering eyes was now a blood red flame of hate. Garland fled to Africa. He's still here. Borger, I'm Garland. The ruddy colour drained swiftly from Borger's beefy face, leaving it oddly mottled. He gazed in terrified fascination at the revolver that was now in Woodenface's hand. "'By using me for a stepping-stone, Borger,' Woodenface continued softly, "'you mean that you juggled my books while I was on that western trip out of the office? Strange that I didn't guess it before, but I see it all now. The remedy is obvious. If you should happen to fail to return to New York—' With what I now know, I can go back and clear myself. The muzzle of the revolver rose until it pointed directly at Borger's forehead. Borger was too sick with cold fear to even plead for mercy. For a long, tense minute, wooden faced Jones's finger tightened slowly upon the trigger. Then, with a cry that was half a sob, wooden face abruptly lowered the weapon. I can't do it he groaned. Not that way. If I'd kill you without giving you at least a chance for your life, I'd always be seeing that damned flabby face of yours in my dreams. Wooden Face's eyes roved restlessly around the room, as though seeking inspiration. Then he noted the array of bottles on a sideboard over against the wall. He smiled grimly. He tossed the revolver over to MacDonald. Keep that swine covered, Mac while my back is turned. 
Wooden face walked over to the sideboard. Borg, we'll go back to the Middle Ages to solve our little problem. You remember their old custom of trial by ordeal? There are cyanide salts in that jar. There is port wine in this bottle. I'll turn my back to you and hide these two glasses as I mix our drinks. In one of them I'll put cyanide. Then I'll let you choose which one you will drink. I will drink the other. One of us will go back to New York and life. Do you agree? Borger's nod of assent was a little too eager, MacDonald thought. Then he saw the reason. In a mirror on the end wall, Borger was watching Wooden Face's hidden hands as he prepared the drinks. One of the glasses was of green glass, the other white. It should be easy for Borger to identify the one into which the cyanide went. Wooden Face seemed to take an unnecessarily long time to mix the drinks. MacDonald wondered if the derelict might not have noticed the mirror also, and be deliberately tricking Borger. He knew that Wooden Face had phenomenally clever fingers. He often amused the natives with his sleight of hand. When Wooden Face turned, there was a warning look in his eyes that silenced any thought of protest that MacDonald had. Borger's face was confident as he selected the green glass. "'We'll drink at the same moment,' Wooden Face ordered. The salty taste of the cyanide will immediately warn the loser, so we will drain our glasses at a single gulp. The two men lifted their glasses in a mocking suggestion of a toast, then drank. Borger strangled, then scrambled wildly to his feet, tearing at his collar. His eyes were fixed upon Wooden Face with a terrible questioning. Wooden Face merely smiled quietly as he set his empty glass down. Borger's face purpled hideously, and he fell heavily to the floor. MacDonald bent over him for a minute. Dead, he announced crisply. He got the cyanide glass after all, in spite of the mirror. Wooden face smiled gently. There was no cyanide, Mac. I put nothing but a spoonful of common table salt in each glass. He tasted the salty tang, and saw that I was apparently unscathed. His own imagination, and that booze-soaked heart of his, did the rest. If you enjoyed listening today, be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button below. After doing so, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to receive new content notifications. If you'd like to support our work and receive exclusive perks, consider becoming a channel member by clicking the Join button below. To support us in other ways, see the video description for links to our Bandcamp and Patreon pages, our merch store over at Teespring, and further information relating to our releases on Audible, iTunes, and Spotify. And until next time.